There is concern this morning over a possible link between dental x-rays and a certain type of brain tumor. A new study found that patients who had x-rays at least once a year on their entire mouths were more than twice as likely to develop a tumor. Neurosurgeon Dr. David Langer is with us. He is director of research at the Cushing Neuroscience Institute. Good morning. Morning. When you hear this, the first question you ask is, should I have x-rays at the dentist office? The answer is yes and no. <laughs> well, how do you know when it's yes and how do you know when it's no? Well, I think that, you know, in the end, these studies are important in that they are a reflection of how to live your life, you know, and, and to everything in moderation. It's the same recommendation. The point is, if you need an x-ray, if you have symptoms, if you have pain in your teeth, and the dentist examines you and is concerned you have a cavity, you need an x-ray. I think that's, that's the point. Do most dentists agree with this study and, and will they act in accordance with the results of this study? I don't know. I mean, I, just the study was just released and so how dentists react has more to do with their own bias and their own individual patients. I think if you have dentists who are, who are intelligent, I would think, which they, most of them are, you know, you have to take these studies for what they are. And I would say, in general, it would make sense to just do x-rays less frequently because we know, not just based on this study, but any study that's ever been out there, that radiation is not a good thing for your face, your teeth, your, your brain. And so that, that's, that goes along with that. Well, you know, it was so frightening to me because guess where I was on Saturday? At the dentist. Guess, I was at the dentist, <laughs> and guess what I had on Saturday? An x-ray. An x-ray. <laughs> and it was a bite wing. Uh -huh. And so the study was pointing out in particular the bite wing. And they said, but normally, if, if, if it happens, it's a benign tumor. And I'm thinking, benign doesn't make me feel any better either. Well, it should make you feel better. I mean, well, well, I know, no, no, no. Of course, it makes me feel better. But just the fact of having a tumor on your right. brain no, that could possibly sure. be caused by an X-ray is. No, everything I'm about, about brain tumors is location. So if you have a benign tumor in a bad location, it can be worse than a malignant tumor, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But in the end, I think they're still relatively rare um, in general. I think getting one X-ray in your teeth is not going to necessarily, you know, lower you. Bring your. It's not a threshold of risk that I would worry about not getting the X-ray. On the other hand, I think the way you live your life, you know, you don't want to get multiple films that are unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And so, in, in the end, the, the frequency and the risk is, has to be, you know, mitigated against the, your, your benefit. But the and point that, is that most people don't know this. I mean, yes. it's, well, yeah. the dentists have How to much know is it. enough? Yeah. The dentists have to know it. And the dentists, I'm sure, do. I don't think dentists want to give their patients tumors. Yeah. And so they have to, this will be in their literature, this will be discussed in their meetings, like anything else in medicine. But on the other hand, it's not a 100% guarantee. There are problems with the study. There are critics, going to be criticisms. Right. The American Dental Association is already raising some of the criticism. Right, which I think are appropriate. I mean, when you do studies that are large like this, where you go back and you call people and say, do you remember having an x-ray when you were a child? And they say, oh yeah, I remember having an x-ray. Well, you know, that's, that's great, but you know, the trouble is that those are, t when you add starting doing very rigid statistical measurements to memory, you can run into some problems. You don't seem overly concerned, doctor. So your bottom line is? My bottom line is, if you need an x, you know, it's not going to prevent me from getting an x-ray if I go to the dentist, per se. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not having symptoms, I don't think you should just willy-nilly do it. It's not one x-ray that's the problem. It's the repetitive nature of x-rays. It's like so using cell phones or coffee or all these other things that have come up over the years or do these cause a problem. You know, I, I, it's not going to stop me from drinking coffee, and it's yeah. not going to stop me from using my cell phone because I need to use it. Yeah. It's a risk-benefit analysis for each individual, and I think it, it, the way I would interpret this, if you were a concerned citizen, concerned about your children, is question it. it. Never hurts the question: Do we really need to do this today? Is this absolutely necessary? And that little shift, I think, is important for the consumer because you know, if you cut your X-rays down 50 percent, that's got to be a good thing. So the bottom line is ask your dentist. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I do what the dentist says, but I, I will ask a question. You're right. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Langer. Thank you very Thank you. much.